Thank you. Hello, how y'all doing? My name is Chris Anthony. I founded a small organic farm and training facility in Statesville, North Carolina. We focus primarily on a organic farming, sustainable urban lifestyle and trying to live a healthier life. I wanna thank you for allowing me to share with you today and I'd like to share with you some of the goals that uh, we're trying to achieve. We have installed a small aquaponics greenhouse in our backyard that actually helps sustain our family and our lifestyle. One of the things I would like to ask you is, are we living longer because we're healthier or because modern medicine has improved? Well, think about this. Age statistics are based on the elderly, a generation who actually lived a much different lifestyle than most of us and definitely a different lifestyle than our young people. Nearly 24 million young people in this country are obese, overweight. It's on the rise. It's increasing more every day. Now we all know that research shows that overweight and obesity will cause other health issues. And those young people will have to face those health issues in the near future. 2014 studies released show that the adolescent obesity, excuse me, adolescent diabetes is on the rise. Nearly 30% increase in the last decade. Now, I've got to think back when I was a kid in school. I never witnessed a classmate go to the school nurse to get an insulin shot. Truth is, I never even knew what diabetes was when I was in school. Today, almost every young person in the country has either been diagnosed or has a friend that's already diagnosed with diabetes. There's something strange about that. Also, we've had a 5% of the American kids 12, age 12 to 19 are now using antidepressants. Another 6% is take a medication for ADHD. That's a total of about four million kids. There's something wrong with this picture. Four million kids. And they've all been diagnosed with something. ADHD, depression, anxiety, ADHD, and the list just goes on and on. Another concern I have is high fructose corn syrup very alarming to me. A few years back, we perfected high fructose corn syrup to make a much sweeter and a much cheaper sugar additive. It's much sweeter. It's a lot less expensive. And it's used in processed foods. Did you know 20 ounces of soda has about 15 teaspoons of sugar? The average American right now consumes about 156 pounds of sugar per year. That is nearly a half a pound of sugar per person per day for every American. And I myself eat very little sugar, so that means someone is even consuming my part. Also, high fructose corn syrup, extreme stream amounts, has been related to fatty liver disease, which is a growing concern. 90 million Americans are affected by fatty liver disease. Research shows in turn fatty liver disease is also related to diabetes, strokes, cancer, dementia, and lots of other things. Now it's really hard to avoid this sugars and sweeteners because it's used in everything, all processed food. Sweetened drinks, energy drinks, most cereals, most cakes, breads, candies, processed dinners, processed box foods. Almost all of them have high fructose corn syrup. In extreme amounts, we're headed for disaster with those. This is all easy to see once you start doing a little research and take the blinders off 
and try to look at where we're going with these young people. I know it's pretty tough to see that. But as parents, we need to be responsible for our children's health. And we need to recognize this. Because we're the ones that's purchasing the boarding pass for this runaway train of disaster. We need to be looking for better options for our kids. Because they're going to have to pay down the road. What we're feeding them today will be their medical bills in the future. I have narrowed it down to what I feel like is three easy steps to start looking for a better way. Now, there's lots of research out there. You can go on the Internet, find some very credible resources that will give you some great steps to help change your life. But I've tried to narrow it down to three. And number one seems to always be the hardest. Because as you speak with people, they think the lifestyle they're living is perfectly normal. I mean, really, we think this is perfectly normal? Most of us are taking medication for something. We wake up each day, we take a pill for whatever we've been diagnosed with. And that's going to be the answer. But no, that's not the answer. Because I myself could never imagine being diagnosed with anything and thinking the pill was going to take care of it. I must make life-changing decisions to go with that medication. Medication is great, and it's helped a lot of people around the world. But there's also a lot of side effects that comes with that medication. That's why it has all the warning labels. So we need to make life-changing decisions once we're diagnosed with something and we're given medication. This is the hardest part for people to realize, is step one is recognizing that we must make life-changing decisions, not just for our kids, but for ourselves, because we are influencing our kids. That's the hardest step. Number two, it's time to encourage those kids to go out and play on the original PlayStation, tire swings, gym sets, bicycles, and do the things that we did as a kid. When I was a kid, I didn't stay on the house on a sofa I was outside. We built army forts, played in the woods, did all that good stuff. This is clearly to see that we have an issue here. It's, it's clear. We're constructing new housing developments in every city across America. But how often do you see us constructing a new park for our kids to go out and be active? Most of the parks in this country are over 20 years old. That clearly shows you there's a problem. We have a growing population. You can walk into a retail store. The outdoor activity section is shrinking while the electronic section is growing. Now, us as parents, we're responsible for this because we're the ones pulling out the debit cards and credit cards, making these purchases. We're responsible for our kids' activity. And we're also responsible for how much time is allotted to each activity. And we need to get these kids out, outdoors. It's a proven fact that people are outdoors are healthier. Not only will they live a healthier lifestyle and lose some weight, but they're also going to be less depressed. Proven, proven statistics, without a shadow of a doubt. Step three. This is a tough one. This is tough. Probably the hardest, one of the hardest ones to overcome because we're spending millions and millions and billions of dollars in this country on advertisements. And as a whole, we want what looks good on the advertisement. It's not related to nutritional value or taste anymore. It is strictly about what looks good on that commercial, especially with young people. They're so easy to be influenced. But we need to change that. We need to find something healthy about this beautiful plate of nice, colorful, nutritional vegetables. Not all the junk food. One of the things that's always kind of puzzled me is when I walk into a supermarket. I see a bottle of soda. I see a bottle of water. They cost almost the same. Both are in a plastic container. Both have a label. But they cost almost exactly the same. 
And most water companies don't even spend millions of dollars for prime TV commercials. That is a problem. So the soda is on sale. A lot of times it's even cheaper. Something's wrong with that picture. One of the things is, is most people can't find anything attractive about a glass of water and a plate of vegetables. Because we're not making it attractive with advertisements. If you don't think our diet in this country is a problem, it's easy to see. We have $12, billion, $12 billion a year spent in vitamins. We have another $30 billion spent in dietary supplements. That's $42 billion. Why would one of the most, one of the countries that grows the most food in the world need $42 billion a year in diet, supplements, and vitamins? Add that on top of all the medications and medical bills, it's pretty clear to see that we're paying a premium for our diet. and Getting very little in return. But we're paying a premium price for it. It all starts with the diet. Once we start eating healthy, our whole life begins to change. We start becoming more active. The more active we become, the more weight we lose. The more weight we lose, the more active we become. And so on. Not only that, a healthy diet is also related to help cure depression. It's been proven many times in statistics. People who live a healthier life have less health issues. So why are we not seeing this? Well, a lot of people say, wow, has this guy really seen the cost of that fresh vegetables and fresh protein he's talking about? Probably not because he grows his own. But the truth is I have. That is why I'm growing my own. Plus, most of the people saying that or thinking that are the same people I spoke of in step one. They're not recognizing the issue as they sit at home in front of their 54-inch TV with surround sound. We all have a choice to give up a luxury. I myself find that living healthy lifestyle is probably the top luxury life has to offer. Aquaponics plays the biggest part in my family eating healthy. It has secured my family a sustainable, healthy, organic lifestyle. It plays the biggest part with a few other simple steps. Aquaponics, what is that? Well, it's really simple. It's an organic gardening system that's low maintenance. You can harvest vegetables and fish from the same system. It can be done anywhere, from a small fish aquarium in front of a window in your home, to a back patio system, to a backyard greenhouse. In the near future, you're going to see aquaponic systems popping up in cities and rooftops all across this country because aquaponics is the future. It almost forces the food industry to go organic. Ask me, well, if it's so great, why have we heard of it or doing it? Well, cultures have been doing it for a thousand years around the world. One is the Aztec culture, which has been long forgotten. They actually built the floating, garden, floating gardens of Mexico. And they took the nutrient-rich fish water and irrigated their crops. And they're not the only culture that's used this around the world. Today's aquaponics has changed. We now have what's called looped aquaponics, where we actually raise fish in tanks and we pump this nutrient-rich water up through grow systems. The vegetables can absorb those nutrients. and That in return will clean the water to give these fish a healthy environment. Over the last 20 years, aquaponics has branched out into a lot of different types of grow systems, large-scale, small-scale systems, 
popping up all over the world? And this could be the answer, because for working folks that don't have a lot of time, it's low maintenance, and low maintenance is key for most of us. How aquaponics works? It's really simple. Some basic science. The fish release ammonia into the water, mostly through the fish waste. We have a healthy bacteria established that's growing that happens naturally in some grow media where our vegetables are. That ammonia, nutrient-rich water, is pumped up into that grow bed. And that bacteria will convert that ammonia to a nitrite. That nitrite will then convert to a nitrate. And then at this point, the vegetables can absorb all these nutrients out of the water. That in turn cleans the toxins from the water that the fish don't like. Then the water goes back to the system. That gives these fish a nice, healthy environment to live in. So this system is perfectly married together. They live in harmony. You have vegetables growing in the system. You can grow its own fish food for a lot of these fish. And you can be growing your fresh protein in the tank. Everything lives in harmony. And it's very self-sustainable. Some of the plants that I've been growing over the years in aquaponics is really simple. It's almost everything that grows in your traditional garden. Strawberries, squash, eggplants, corn, beans. Almost everything will grow in this system. And there's lots of different methods of growing, from PVC pipe up overhead to flood and drain gravel beds, grow media beds. There's lots of different ways to grow lots of different plants. And it can serve space, so you're not using up so much space. The benefits of aquaponics is one of the main things is self-sustainable. The most important is organic. Now we would love to have mercury-free healthy fish for our diet, instead of having to worry about how many times we can eat fish per month. In this system, you don't have to worry about that. You can eat as many fish as you want. You have no pesticides, no weeding. You don't have any hoeing and tillering like traditional gardening. It has a very low carbon footprint. And it conserves water by 80%. Did you hear me, folks? It conserves the most valuable resource on planet Earth by 80% over traditional gardening. That's very important. And also it produces more food per square foot than any system on planet Earth. Fifty million Americans in this country struggle to have enough food on the table. I recently had the pleasure of working with teenagers, building an aquaponic system to help feed the community, in a project called Fish and Veggies Feeding the Community. We can not only change our life with aquaponics, if we work together, we can change communities. It's called teamwork. No one in this country should be hungry. Aquaponics is the future not only for our backyard and our kids, it could change world hunger. We have 842 million people in this world that will, don't have enough food to eat. That's hard to imagine, 842 million people. Most of us can't even imagine putting our kids to bed tonight without dinner. What a shame that is. And then year after year, what do we do? We carry food around the world. I call that the Band-Aid effect. We've taken all hope away from these people to have a, a productive, self-sustainable lifestyle. They just stand and wait for the trucks to arrive. Aquaponics could easily change that. Instead of shipping food to a foreign country that has poor soil or low rainfall or just poverty stricken or even an inner city neighborhood here in the U.S. Why do we want to do that? We have new technology now that has been advanced over the last thousand years that could change all this and make these people more independent. Folks, it is time for a change in the food supply. 
So when you walk out in your backyard, take a look around all that grass you're mowing. Why are you doing that? Gas is expensive. Lawnmowers are expensive. I mean, it's very time consuming. Look at those flowers. You could pull them up and plant some fresh vegetables. You could build a garden box over on the other side with some nice fresh vegetables. If you don't have a backyard, look at a patio box. Every little bit counts. Even a planter box in front of a window. Kids typically love watching seeds be dropped in dirt and growing into a plant. Let's face it, every kid loves to play in the dirt. We all did as kids. If you don't have any desire to actually grow your own food, then make some better choices when you go in the grocery store. You have that option. Show your grocery stores that you want to change. Show that supermarket manager that I want to change in what's in my grocery store. And you have that option three times a day to show that change. We call it breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The more organic food you buy, the more they're going to stock. And that's what makes a change. A man once said, give a man a fish, he will eat for a day. Teach a man to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. Teach a man aquaponics, his whole community can eat for generations. And that man was me. Because I am convinced that aquaponics can change the world. Because it's such a simple system with low maintenance, it can change the whole world. And I have made it my goal to try to share it with as many people as possible in hopes that we can make a change. Because, folks, it is time for a change in the food supply. There's no doubt about it. It's time to wake up and look around at what we're consuming. I want to thank you all for allowing me to share with you today on the TED stage. And I hope we end up having a wonderful day. Thank you.